Hey guys, the Nintendo Doctor here, and we're gonna do a pickups video. Russ Lyman, and I'm in. <laughs> and I'm Gina Kalima. What's going on, guys? Did that work? So we ended up getting a ton of stuff at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Uh, we the show just ended on Sunday night. We got some really, really great stuff. We're hiding it so you can't see it. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of amazing. Uh, a little all over the board. But, yeah, some high-end uh, stuff, some yeah. common stuff. I know George was getting a lot of like N64 filler titles because he's trying to go for that complete set. Yeah, I got a few actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to be eating a lot of Top Ramen. All right, so I, don't know, I guess we'll bounce around and kind of show yeah, off some yeah, stuff yeah, we got. Yeah. I'll start off with like the crappiest stuff. Amiibos. <laughs> yeah. We got the the Yoshi uh, Woolly World Amiibos. Yeah. So, uh, Friday morning we went Lucario. So. Yeah, we hit up Best Buy locally in Portland here. I was missing Lucario where my, me and my brother were, and those the the Yoshi ones just came out. So I'll show off this cool glass that I got. Uh, it's an etched glass, um, and it says Portland Retro Gaming Expo 10th Anniversary, and it's kind of in the Back to the Future font because they were going with that theme. Um, and I had to get pretty much anything that was like Back to the Future related. So I picked that guy up. He was uh, 15 bucks. Guy was real nice. We talked to him for like 15 minutes. He said he can etch anything on a glass. So maybe I'll get my face. The 8-bit <laughs> face would look the sweet on a glass. On especially if you're drinking a beer. And, and it like, definitely oh, would have to say, hey guys, Russ that. Lyman here. <laughs> <laughs> or be like, hey guys, Russ Lyman drinking here. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> Drinking apple juice. <laughs> root beer. We did go to a place where they brewed their own root beer. Yes. We went with the Fathead Brewing here in Portland, and that was the first time going for me. And the food was actually really, really good, and they had their own root beer. And mm -hmm. it was it was really good. Yeah, yep. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So you got the Back to the Future style glass. Yeah. What other Back to the Future stuff did you get? Um, well, I ended up picking up um, a t-shirt as well that was themed to Portland Retro Gaming Expo. And it kind of has Marty McFly there in the uh, radiation suit. Um, Portrait Retro Gaming Expo on that. And then um, I was cosplaying as Marty McFly uh, throughout the convention. And I saw they had Back to the Future 2 hats. So the guy gave me five bucks off this guy. That's actually pretty cool. That's awesome. It's like solid. Like you can't knock I it I got in. a couple of these, so I'm not going to show them since... This yeah, George picked exactly. up the same shirt I too. wanted to get that hat and I forgot. Yeah. I, I, a lot of people were having them and they're like, oh, cool. Because I ended up... Uh, getting too hot cosplaying, so I just wore my vest and the hat, and it still looked like Marty McFly. I did, yep. And I got a poster too, um, just a regular poster, something small, looked real cool. He has like the power glove holding an Atari controller, and someone actually showed up cosplayed in in this outfit as well. Towards oh, the yeah. end, yep. that's pretty cool. And we'll, we have, I think we have shots of that. I know I will for sure. So, because they followed around each other and hugged each other and <laughs> missed the time continuum. The space and yeah, time sure. We didn't blow Nothing up. Nothing exciting. So we were good. You know, so, <laughs> so um, we'll show some of the smaller stuff because honestly, <laughs> just has heavy hitters. So we gotta get <laughs> to I like do. we gotta yeah we gotta get to like the you know we gotta get to the good stuff. So we'll, um, I got this for my sister, and then this is the other, the other uh, port. That that one glows under a black light. Yeah, so, so that one's cool, and it's a little bit stiffer. And then I got reason. this one. I got this one for myself. Which uh, is the Mega Man one. This is done by was it Charlie Duncan? He's a local artist. He has a lot of color pencil and pen and ink. So and I was hoping you were gonna chime in because I can't. I couldn't remember who I. Yeah. I know I got the cards somewhere in like the stack of cards that I got this weekend. So we got that, and then um, I guess I'll show this because we all got one of these as That's well. That's right. It's the collectible arcade Wait, coin. You got one? I didn't get one. You didn't get one? They were yeah. free. <laughs> Course. I might have taken yeah, two, so I'll take a look. <laughs> yeah, so we got these. I guess everybody got one for free. Everybody uh, everybody walking around, right? It was like a general admission type of thing. Yeah. And then I got uh, Hyper Load Runner. I like the Load Runner series, and so I'm thinking this is part of that series. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Some games aren't connected. And a cleaning kit for Game Boy. Not bad. So I do some, uh, some smaller stuff, I guess. Um, towards the end of the day on Sunday... Everyone was putting discounted stuff, so I picked up for five bucks uh, Bad Dudes boxed on the NES. I really like the artwork on that. It's definitely cool. It's a little nice. bit banged up, but once I throw it in like a, a protective uh, clear case, it'll look fine on the shelf. I'm I, not sure, but I think uh, Mark Erickson. Did oh, did that he one. do that one I as think well? He did that one. Oh. He did Strider and he Mega Man. He wasn't there too. today, was he? I didn't see him all weekend. He no. said he was coming, and I had a stack of Mega Man 2s because I was going to get him to sign them. 
before you sold them or whatever. Maybe. A little added value. <laughs> Dirty resellers. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty resellers. <laughs> I was telling, it was funny because when he grabbed that, I was like, I got the... I got the, the cabinet, cabinet for yeah. that. I was like, I don't need no stinking NES on Bad Dudes game. <laughs> but when I bought it, they said, I hope you saved the president. <laughs> Let's see, a couple of other small things here. Well, well, we got some N64 stuff even, not even really worth mentioning. WrestleMania 2000, Knife Edge. Oh. And, um, what is that? Lamborghini. Automobili? Lamborghini? Yeah. yeah so racing game. I didn't have these. It's going to go towards our complete set. Nightmare Creatures, which I got a really good deal at, what's the name of that store? Oh, oh video store? game wizards. Video game wizards, which um, it was a little bit more, and then the guy, he remembered me from when we visited the store prior to the show, and he was like, "Oh, cool!" and he gave me a better deal on it. Yeah. So wizards is one of the big sponsors for the PRGE every year, and they're my favorite local retro shop, and they they hooked up George pretty good. Once yeah, they did. Absolutely. Nice. And then we got uh, I got these two here, which, which is Mega Man deal. and Proto Man, which is a great deal. Seven bucks. For for both, right? Or it was seven apiece. No, yeah, seven, seven a piece. piece. Seven a piece. Because I was like, the frame alone is probably like three or four dollars. That's what we figured. Yeah. So. <laughs> and so they had one. Cool. Um, I and I kind of like Mega Man. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I <laughs> was they, looking for some Mega Man stuff. You didn't go back. They had the. Um, it was like a ten by ten. Oh yeah. With all, all the bosses. And it was eighty bucks, and they were like, they're like, we'll ship it to you, and he's like. And we got two of them. If you, if you feel like you want to offer us something, come back and offer. But it's really bulky and big. And so I was like, as it is, I'm going to do like magic to put this stuff in my suitcase and stuff. So. <laughs> and I think that's... I think that's... Maybe you can show off one of yours. Oh, wait, hold on. And Russ got me this at your show? Um, no, I had picked oh. it up. Uh, one of my buddies that I follow has a clothing line called Fed uh, Clothing. And I, I bought it a while ago, and I had shipped uh, the Nintendo Doctor the the wrong shirt. <laughs> so I had to bring him the right shirt me. when I came here. So Fed Lens, that's that's pretty cool. Instead of Borderlands. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Got this little dude right here. But yeah. So thanks, Russ. Cool. Hey, no problem. All right. Oh, I ended up actually getting one NES game I needed for the collection. Okay. And cool story. So this is uh, Gargoyles 2. It's the quest. And pretty much someone traded me this and a small sack of money to take it from them. And <laughs> right. Which is always good, right? So a couple weeks ago, I was at the Vancouver Retro Toy Show for PRGE, and I was repping for them, and I was handing out flyers and inviting people to come out to the show. Well, so, someone came out to me, and they had a boxed Metal Gear for... Game Boy Color, Game I think. Game Boy Color. Yeah. And I was the only one selling retro games, and... Uh, he sold it to me at a really, really good price. Okay. And I was able to trade that for a game I do actually want to play, and it's going in the collection. That's I'm cool. Going for a complete collection, and the make up the difference, I got some cash. So someone basically paid me to take this game from them. There we go. Fun stories like that. I was there when it happened, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I kept going back to that place to see if I can get them to go down on stuff. Yeah. But it was not going to happen. No. <laughs> uh, let's see some other common stuff that I picked up. Uh, I have the second one. Oh, you want to jump onto that? No. The, the <laughs> PlayStation White I Controller. Wanted to get, I wanted to get it out of the way before you got going. Cause... Not on the PlayStation. Um, I picked up the first Act Razor. Um, I had the second one, and I enjoyed that one, so I needed the first one. Um, it was $20, bucks, um, and I've been looking for it for a while. I never see it in the wild. It never comes to my that? store. I said it's like a hybrid between, like, a side-scrolling beat 'em up and like a Sims game. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. You were yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I should have sold that with my sign. <laughs> that's that, true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been an added little touch, and uh, then we could have signed it. And you could have been like, it was signed by people. People. The frat pack. <laughs> then I picked up uh, for ten bucks with the manual <laughs> box and everything, Dino Wars, nice. on the NES. Um, it says it has a, a rip in the manual. Um, but that's all right. I could always get an upgrade down the road. Um, really cool game. You play as like a cyborg robot, and you actually jump into like a dinosaur and ride him. I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's fun. It's, it's fun, fun though. Great eighties. Um, and then this is, I think, one of the first games I picked up when we got there um, for the Super Nintendo. One of my favorite games is Batman Returns Complete in Box. I have it loose, so I'll probably be getting rid of that. That's copy. a cool game to have Complete in Box. Yeah, I'm a real big Batman fan, um, and I have. Batman Returns on the Nintendo as well, so I was like, if I get it complete in box, you know, look that much nicer. I got a couple of things here that I kind of just uh, got in sort of a little open trade, kind of, uh, with with uh, uh, the dock here. 
And then with somebody that I met, I think Cartridge Canuck was his name. Okay. Um, out of Canada. And so the first few things are Super Spike Volleyball, Madden NFL 94, and Troy Aikman Football, which uh, Reba Chicken, my little brother, he actually likes. Um, Collecting boxes. Yeah, he likes his games in box. I don't. I, I, I have no preference, but he really likes it. So I was like, I'll take them. And then... I, I got those because they're donor carts. So I always <laughs> need those. Yeah. <laughs> They become better games. And so then the doc, he made a mistake. He, he kind of <laughs> offered for me to dig into a couple of boxes, and he's like, yeah, whatever you have in there, you know, just uh, let me know, and then we'll figure it out later. Okay. <laughs> so I found Rockman X in Rockman Soccer. Rockman X, he didn't really have a problem with. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. And then later on, I find this one. <laughs> and when I show him, I'm like, I pull it out of the box, and he's like, what is it? And I show it to him, he's like, that one's mine. <laughs> I, I don't have that in uh, English, so that's why yeah, I was like, neither, yeah, but neither I'm not going to play it. Yeah, so he said, I'm not going to play it, take it, and so I'll, I'll make sure to repay that kindness. And then uh, Cartridge Canuck, along with this and some other stuff, I got Rockman X, which kind of... Oh, that kind of completes yeah, that. It, yeah, it completes, it, yeah. It, it keeps, or it, it uh, yeah, completes that set, kind of. Rockman X2 and Rockman 7, which I almost got all that the games, like yeah. the, the Rockman games, but they were a little too pricey, so I'll just probably hold off on that. I got some smaller things. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess yeah, you yeah. So I really like show exclusives, like anything that says I was at this event. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like my one piece of I can look back at. Uh, try the memorabilia right, aspect right. of it. So for this year, uh, they had, there was two games. I got Atari 2600, Smash It Up. And this is a one-player uh, Atari game uh, featuring the PRGE, and the other one is PRGE X. And in this game, you, I believe, try to get to the show, and everything's oh, okay. trying to stop you. Uh, I was very close to picking that up because of the cover, because it has. So like, you're like the back this awesome the blob getting yeah. shot at by <laughs> other blobs, and just like yeah. Yeah. So this is done by uh, Lost Classics, uh, Chris Tremune's local to Portland. He's been doing repros for years and years, and he he actually designed these two games for the show so I always think that's cool last year he had two games and these are gonna go in my show collection of things I attend and I like having and that one actually says PRG on the back so it that's, says PRG that's in the back. Cool. so on the yeah the, the screen and that one has it in the name of course so that one has it in the name oh that one's two players cool and uh, there's some other show uh, exclusives we got too oh yeah so. yep definitely yeah. Uh, yeah we got some too we can probably jump into it when we um, Got right to the show. Um, we started talking with a gentleman um, that's a part of a great like uh, organization that helps kids. Um, I don't know too much about it. I know they were talking about it throughout the uh, convention, and there's a lot of donation going towards it. I believe he works for him now. Yeah. So uh, most people are familiar with uh, John Hancock. He's on Metal Jesus Channel and other channels, and John's a great guy. He puts on Callet's Gamers for Kids, and that happens earlier in the year, and all that money. He raises goes towards that, and it's helping abused and neglected children in the local area. And he had a game made that I helped out just a little bit with, and oh, yeah, we, right. we picked up copies. Yeah, we ended up having him sign it. I picked up the uh, Sega CD version of it. Um, it's number 13 of 40, uh, Code Eliminator. Um, it's pretty much a very slow-paced uh, shooter. Yeah, George picked up the Sega, uh, regular Sega version. Yeah, the Genesis. Um, yeah, they came with like uh, a manual in there. We got his card. And you play actually as his head in the sunglasses. Uh, I don't know if you really see it there, but pretty cool. We played it a little bit. Yeah, it came with a little <laughs> alien thing. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, we got it signed by him. I mean, he's a really humble dude. He's a really nice guy. He's got one of the, I think, one of the biggest collections around. I think he has like 27 complete collections. 27 wow, complete yeah. collections. So I think uh, the channel Luigi Freakout, they did a collection video mm -hmm. of his collection. And so if you guys want to check it out, it really is amazing. It really is. So He's a cool dude. Uh, I got mentioned in the, the manual also. Oh, I was going to say that. that. Yeah, yeah, I forgot so about that. That. Was, yeah. that was pretty cool. And at the auction, he had a special edition that they sold, and it had his signature hat and glasses there. Oh, that's that came right. with the, his yeah. hat and the glasses. The girl was wearing them whenever they auctioned it off. That's right. Yeah. That was cool. cool. And it went for, uh, I think, like a couple hundred dollars, and mm -hmm. that all went to charity. Yeah. And uh, another auction item, uh, Nintendo Age ended up doing a NWC cart for PRGE, uh, numbered, I think, 1 to 10, 
and they were auctioning, auctioning off number four, and I ended up picking that up at the auction. Um, I did it for a $300 donation uh, for C-Jack, and I had a lot of fun. I was... I usually pick up the event exclusives. Mm -hmm. This year they didn't have the Tetris World Championship cart, so the money I set aside for that, instead of going to the Tetris company or going towards uh, PRGE for the help run it, it's going to Callets, and I had a lot of fun bidding against it. Oh, well, I, I was over there. I've never <laughs> bid on something so high, so I was sitting there like, <laughs> hope, yes. I get it, hope I get it. I, I was gonna get it. There was. I'm like, no I'm sitting like you four went people the down, and he was team. just like holding the cart up. It's like <laughs> not coming down. <laughs> I, will take it. I was just like, nope, nope, it's coming home with me. <laughs> All right, so um, you want to save that one or you want to uh, go ahead? And... Let, let me do this one. This is uh, the other NWC cart that was done. Oh, okay. Uh, so Retro USB with uh, Nintendo Age did a 25th anniversary of the NWC cart. Yeah. It's blacked out. And they modded the ROM so when you play the first level of the Super Mario 1, you're playing at night. Yeah, oh. instead of like regular yeah. daytime, so that's why it reflects it's the black, black cart. Is this is this something they just have? Was this a special cart, or is this something uh, you can just buy? Uh, this cartridge you, here? you can't buy this cartridge. Oh, you can't. Right? Oh. They're not they're not releasing the modded ROM out, but uh, it's really cool. I got to talk again with Thor and hang out with him for a bit. So Thor signed it, and uh, Robin signed it. So the first and third place, and there's a limited run. I think they're only doing 250, and it was a uh, hundred dollar donation. Uh, they get one of these, so awesome. Uh, Definitely a cool collectible. Yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, I want to say it was 2013. They did a Portland uh, PRG exclusive NWC cart. It's green, uh, hollow, and that's the last time I got to see Thor and hang out. He signed that, so did Robin, and right now it's going for like pushing 500, and that was a lot cheaper than this. Wow. So, so. where is the um? The second place person, did they just never show uh, up? Or? I don't think they show up. Like he's still around, but oh, he just, okay. he's not involved in the the community, the community. anymore. Oh, okay. So I got two NWC carts, uh, two repro carts. That's cool. That's very cool. So I got some um, homebrews, I guess. This one is Battle Kit Two. After suffering through the first one and beating it, you know, it only took me about a year. I finally decided <laughs> that I needed to get this one, and also it was a little bit cheaper. So if I'm gonna put myself through that pain. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I got it for like a five dollar discount. I think minus shipping as well. So yeah, you you won the my my early early contest that for the I first did one. I did. He actually he had two and he had said he had two extra ones and he said I'm gonna send you one and mm -hmm. then I'm giving one away for the contest and I was like well why don't you wait and then he rigged it so that I went no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> no then I actually happened to win the contest and I got it so it worked out and then um, the second um, homebrew that I got was the rise of. Amondos? Is I can't even is? pronounce it. Is it that a D? That's an A-M-O-N-D-U-S. The Rise of Almond. <laughs> Amondos. Um, <laughs> Amondos. Amondos. Something like that. Yeah, so the Rise of Amondos, um, they said it's a shooter. Yeah, it's right, a shooter. Correct? Basically, I'll, I'll, well, I'll jump into my pickup to kind of, yes. because I also um, picked up that game, um, but I also picked up the Mad Wizard. Um, and now the Mad Wizard um, came out first, and this game is apparently a prequel. <laughs> you got that one too? <laughs> the doctor picked it up too. So we all got a copy of this one. Um, basically, I guess the end boss in this game, you play as in this game. Yeah. As a, like a shooter. Cool. Um, and the Mad Wizard um, pretty much plays like a platformer, except you can't jump. Um, you can levitate, and you upgrade your levitation of how high you can go and far. How many, like, pixels yeah. and stuff? And, and huh. the carts are awesome. They're, like, in a clear case. This one's in a blue. It comes with a clear dust sleeve cover, and they were, like, great deals. I wanted to almost get all the exclusives that they had at the show. Um, but and they do really good. It's great quality. Like, and this stuff is, like... They're also coming out with, um... Because I was hanging over at that booth for a while. They're coming out with an awesome HDMI uh, Nintendo system. Yeah. He said, I think in, like, February... And it had like oh, it's that little when I the see little it. gray one, right? It's a little gray yeah, one. They, they had, they had, had the, the prototype. Show. They had the and prototype. it like flipped up, and you you could put the cart, you could slide the cart in like this, or put Famicom games straight down. Yeah, um, it was really cool. I'll keep an eye out for it. And I'll definitely like um, like well, to with pick those one types up. of systems. You're right. We'll yeah. believe it when we see it. <laughs> That's all. They've been working out for a while. It's a little bit farther than that other system. We won't even name. Yeah. You know so. Well, at, at the same, the Nintendo H booth, I ended up getting this year's 8-Bit Christmas. Uh, I collect all of these every year. Ooh la la. Yeah. I didn't even see that one out there. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, I got my Christmas card, and this is a special board that they make, and basically there's LEDs that run the length of it, and it lights up. It's great for a top loader, and they blink and do different things. And this year's, it's like a 12-second puzzle, almost like WarioWare, so you put it in, you have 12 seconds or small amount of time to complete the challenge, and then it goes to a new, new puzzle. New puzzle. Um, that's, so that's what it is, a puzzle game? Th this year's it is. Oh, okay. Uh, last year, I want to say it was a Killer Queen type clone, so that big 5 versus 5 arcade machine. Uh, they do something different every year. I I'm missing the first two years, but those those uh, cards, I want to say 2008 and 2009, they're pushing like 1000 each. Wow. And I can't do it for even a homebrew. I can't pay $1,000 for But I like picking these up, and I didn't have to pay shipping. Yeah, got it that's early. What saved. Yeah. yeah, I think it was five bucks off as well. Oh, I think right everything. On. I think I everything. Show, was, yeah. yeah, I think everything mm -hmm. was five dollars lower than what it was online. Right. So. Definitely, if you have a top loader, it's the best to yeah. take advantage of that. And looks uh, nice, uh, you know, near the Christmas tree. The previous year was really cool because it controls your Rob. You have Rob plugged in, so you could play the game, and it would control your Rob. And instead of doing the normal stack up and normal movements, he'd make him dance, and it plays Christmas music. Huh. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it really is. How did they even do that? And uh, Con Games put out the incident. Uh, if you're at the show, you can pick it up about a month early and save ten dollars. Also, so this is kind of like a I kept looking at that one. How much one. was that one? Uh, I don't know. I just gave them stacks of money to take. <laughs> How the doctor rolls? He just it's just twenties. It looks like dungeons in the back. Yeah, what is, is that? Was that what that is? Uh, it's kind of like a push platformer. It has a little robot like yeah. on the cover. It's hard to see, and he's like in a warehouse. So it's kind of creepy. I also think there's a like a level editor in it, so it's pretty involved. Okay. And I, I like this guy who programs. He did like Leisure Suit Larry, and he did a port of ET. So yeah, okay. the Leisure Suit Larry, they had that one there. Yeah, that's a good. It one. looked I interesting. It yeah. It looked it's, sexy. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, so I'll just uh, finish showing my stuff off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I got a few uh, more things to knock you out. So um, the whole time, I think, I really lucked out, man. I, we got some great friends, and then friends of friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we met um, one of his buddies, who, who um, is kind of a partner with him, and, yeah. and a buddy of his. His name's Johnny Mono, yeah. right? And he, I don't think he has a channel, but he nope. does have a website, which we'll probably link in the description, mm -hmm. right? So uh, to some of the things he does, I think like a podcast and stuff. And so he hooked me up with Mega Man Battle Network. This is Complete in Box. And uh, for thirty bucks, which is a fantastic deal, I pretty much jumped up and down. He was like, "He's like seriously." When I asked him how much, yeah. and he's like thirty dollars, and I was like, "Money, <laughs> good money, Adam." And then uh, we got got some decals. Oh, I didn't decals. Get those. Those are awesome. Yeah, so we ended up picking that up at um, Arcade Works booth. Oh, okay. Yeah, who does the no, uh, no blinking light win? Oh, that's right. Which I purchased, but they're still having trouble to produce them and shipping out. So I we told them something months. the first time we went by, right? Yeah. And we're like, hey, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> so, anyways, these were two for five. Yeah. Two for five bucks. So it, it's Mega Man stuff. I kind of like Mega Man. Um, uh, and then you worked out a deal. We worked out a deal. So the first night, the show hadn't even started. We had just gotten done setting up. We were all starving. We went and ate dinner. At Fathead. At Fathead. Got the root beer. And uh, we met up with some Canadian friends, uh, Round 2 Gaming, and then someone that I found out, I think their channel name is Canadian Cartridge. Yeah. Canadian yeah, Cartridge. We were there okay. with... Uh, like, the Cartridge Club? Is that what that is? It was weird. Er, everyone there is kind of a part of the Cartridge Club, the Book of the Month style game podcast. Who else was there? I don't want to leave uh, people out. As there was like 17 of us. There was uh, Curtis from Girlfriend vs. Uh, Eric and Melissa, Q-Dog were there. Uh, the Portlandian showed up. Mm -hmm. Stumptown Retro, the Portlandian. Yeah. Uh, you guys, me. We were there. Yeah, there was just so I saw many. like Round 2 Gaming and then uh, a Canadian Cartridge, which I did, I, had, I wasn't subscribed to. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Dean over at Round 2 Gaming I was too. I don't know about you guys, the rest of the people there. But there was a few other people and we're sorry if we missed you and you are watching this video. <laughs> uh, big time apologies. But anyways, um, so I'm sitting there and there, there were, we're talking about what we're all going to pick up. Mm -hmm. What we're all going to grab. And I told him, I was like, well, I'm looking for a complete Mega Man 4 and 6 because 5 I will never be able to afford. And he's like, hold on. And he like whispers something over to him. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I've got, I've got some stuff I want to trade. Mm -hmm. And so whenever he told me what it was, I was like, oh, crap. Well, uh, 
you know, let's see what he says, how much he wants. And then under his breath, I honestly heard him say something like, oh, you know, nothing more than $100. And I was like, whatever, you know, you just heard whatever you wanted to hear. It's like, that's not what he's going to want. So anyways, long story short, the next morning we meet up and he tells me what I want really and he told me that night as well, right? Yeah, so he's uh, looking for Demon Crest. A copy of Demon's Super Crest. Super Nintendo, yeah. And so that same day, I had seen we had seen one for 120 bucks, and right away I was like, you know what, 120 bucks. If this guy really wants a copy of Demon's Crest, I have no problem paying yeah. that for what he's gonna give me. So, what was originally promised was a box and manual for Mega Man 4, and a box and manual for Mega Man 5, which um. A lot of people probably don't look into this because of how pricey it is, but this box alone is between $120 and $170, depending on the day, you mm -hmm. know, depending on how much a person wants to pay that day. And then on top of that, he was like, you know what? After I bought him Demon's Crest, and he's like, how much did you pay? And I was like, 110 And he's like, oh my gosh. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to give you these other two boxes, and you can maybe find a good home for them or switch out your boxes. Mm -hmm. So he gave me the box and manual for Mega Man 2 and the box and manual for Mega Man 3. And they got the foamies inside as well. So, awesome. that was it. That was like, that's... That's crazy. It's <laughs> nuts. It's insane. Like, it still hasn't sunk in. Once I get home and, like, I put everything inside and I put them and I stack them up together, it's yeah, going to be like... Yeah, all that purple. Nerd, yeah, nerd yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got yeah, Mega Man. So, so I'll have the first five and then I'll need six, which that one won't... Won't yeah, be no. too hard to find. That'll it's... The easiest. They had them. Them. Yeah. They had them. They had a bunch here, but it was... They were, they were holding price. Nobody was budging. So, anyways, that that was the deal for me this weekend. Uh, I couldn't be happier with with that. I mean, that's awesome. And that Mega Man Battle Network, honestly, it's almost seventy bucks. So, I if I really wanted a complete unbox, there was no way that I was going to be paying less than like fifty. I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. So to get it for thirty bucks, really, really awesome. That's why I do Universal Game Cases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, that's since awesome. <clears throat> that's gonna be like one of the the main things that I'm coll we're collecting mm -hmm. for, we're kind of you just Mega Man, and <clears throat> so we're gonna do complete unbox for that, and everything else is just like whatever cartridge or you know, yeah. Hopefully, pop it in and play it, you know, within the next forty years. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, that that was great, man. I, and a big old shout out to you guys. I'll make sure to link uh, you, especially there, uh, Canadian cartridge to the to your channel. Cool. Cool. So I got a couple more items, not, not too many. Um, I was on the hunt for a certain couple games. Um, and there was one at the show I ended up slipping um, before doors even opened because we were allowed in early access. Two kind of. Uh, two kind of slipped out in the cracks. Yeah. I was looking for Frankenstein. <laughs> and under both of us. They and kind of slipped out under both of us yeah. a little bit. Uh, it was it Frankenstein, I think the Monster Returns it's called on NES, and Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I was trying to go for, you know, kind of like an October theme, Halloween. Um, and the table next to the doctor had a complete in box one for seventy bucks, and Attack of the Clear Tomatoes was at eighteen. And I was like, oh, I was kind of debating. Which, in it. hindsight, it was pricey. It was, it was pricey. pricey. That's why I would have jumped. Unless that they quicker. were gonna go lower, and because doors price. weren't even open yet, there's no haggle room. No, it's right. the first day, and we're not even open to the public yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like VIPs, because you know. <laughs> VIPs. <sighs> so yeah. so at nine o'clock it was it was VIP access. People that mm -hmm. bought pre reg tickets, I guess. Oh, it was it Saturday? On Saturday, Saturday morning, like morning. Saturday Friday morning. Friday was when we saw. Yes. So Friday's stuff. day zero, which you have to have the green badge tops to get in. But uh, Saturday, so <laughs> right before uh, everyone else that pre registered could come in. So yeah, they opened doors to them at nine o'clock. So we were walking around a little bit, and I was kind of like, well, maybe I should grab that. And we went back to it. And he had all the box games out, and there was one missing, and it was the Frankenstein. There was just one no. spot. The whole table was still full, and there was one spot missing. And he's like, we we're walking by, like, towards the restroom, and he's like, it's gone. <laughs> and then we walked by, and before you finish, we walked by, and we see Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. And so I see it there, and I'm like, it's 18 bucks. I'm going to get it for him. I paid for it because we laughed for a little bit. I waited. When I went back, it was gone. Yeah. So then I was like, I'm going to get him something else, and my feet are paying for it right now. Because <laughs> I walked around for two hours. We, we checked every table for yeah. those two games, and we couldn't find it. So I was looking at my want list and kind of some other stuff I wanted. Um, and to complete the series, uh, I was looking for Wizards and Warriors 3. Because everyone had two, and everyone had one. Almost Fabio, every man. Did. Everybody was like, we got Fabio. Yeah. No. Um, so uh, George ended up coming back and... He had in his hand Wizards and Warriors 3. 
You don't it was see the only it one. Yeah. I swear it was the only one. I could promise. So, I promise. I'm excited to play it. I never played it before. Um, I enjoyed the other ones. I'd never even seen the front of it. And yeah, funny enough, on the plane ride over, I read the Wizards and Warriors World of Power Nintendo book. book. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know those were a thing. And now yeah. cool. I can't remember the the name of that booth. Remember, I pointed it out to you. Mm-hmm. So uh, whenever I got it, it was twenty bucks, and we got to talking. They had just been to uh, Phoenix for the Game oh, On Expo, yeah. and. Uh, and then I told him, oh, I went to San Francisco because he said he was from the Bay Area. He's like, oh, you're a Niner fan? I was like, yeah. And he's like, I need to give you some money back. He pulls out his wallet and gives me five bucks back. Nice. And so I, then after that, he remembered me. And he was like, oh, could you deal on those, on the Rock Band games? But I was like, no. Nah. Yeah. So. Um, and then we were cruising through and we ended up recognizing uh, Gangster 81, John. Um, super nice dude. Real approachable. Um, so I didn't pick up the game yet, but I did back... Uh, the game that he's coming out here is Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death. Um, I backed this one and also uh, Justice Beaver. Yep. Um, so we got it talking. He actually gave us a little uh, action card of him. <laughs> but he let uh, me and George listen to the soundtrack for Justice Beaver. And he had like a live band that played it. And then they kind of dumbed it down to like 16-bit music. Yep. Um, yep. And it sounded awesome. And I would like to say that I'm like personally guilty sometimes of like some of these bigger YouTubers. Of just being like, like, oh, they seem like non-approachable. They seem like jerks. But man, with that guy, it couldn't have been the opposite. Like, yeah, he's super cool. We ended up Such doing cool like dude. an interview just, with him a little bit later. Mm-hmm. His voice, he was losing his voice and he asked for an interview and he was still like, you know what, I'm losing my voice. Can Do you, do you mind if I come out the table? And we're like, do we mind if you? It's like, <laughs> dude, thank you so yeah. much for doing yeah. it. So, so that was very awesome. Very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, well, as John Hancock was the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so really, really nice awesome. guy. Yeah, awesome. so we had good experiences with that. Um, and then we were chatting with these guys pretty much all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I was talking to these guys. They had a really cool setup, um, and they made their own um, game from scratch. Um, got carts made, um, so they didn't have to like get donor carts and all that. And pretty much um, built it from the ground up. And it's called Haunted Halloween '85. Uh, pretty much, it looks similar to like a River City Ransom. And the whole premise is it's this kid that's in a town and the town kind of gets haunted or like taken over Mm -hmm. and he's trying to, I guess, kill all the zombies and everything. So you go through like the town, you go through the woods and you see him into a like an abandoned mall Mm -hmm. Um, and even showed us parts where they go into a movie theater and you go through like the screen and when you come out into the lobby, there's actually like movie posters that were out right. in 1985 wow um, and then like you'll go to the concession stand and it'll have times like ghostbusters is playing at this time and yeah. the goonies and, and i the, thought that was the really screens cool had like nintendo and like you know inside the actual theater so it was really cool we did a whole interview on the posting um on my site about the guys and how they built the game and everything and um talk about somebody who worked really hard on the game and then was working really hard still like I guess they only had, what, 50 carts? Yeah, they were really trying to get it ready for the show. Um, And then they said, I think on, like, Friday night, they ended up just staying in their hotel and, like, playing the game together as a team and, like, beating it. To be able to, They haven't done it because they're working so hard. But the three three of the guys that worked on the game were there just, I mean, hustling. We've been using that word all weekend, right? But they (laughs) they were hustling. I think we spoke with them probably about... Two and a half hours total, like yeah, the going weekend, in like and the out. most, because they were just, you know, they were just super nice guys. So. I had them sign the cart too. All three guys there. I got a magic racer for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <That'll come right laughs> <up>. <laughs> but another cool thing too, like on the cart, they they made only uh, I think they told me uh, forty carts exclusive That's what to the was. show, yeah. and it says Portland Retro Gaming Expo actually on it the does label. Say Portland Retro Gaming. So again, Expo. it's like another cool. So somebody nod. I don't want to name is gonna go have to find one eventually. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so nice, Great. nice exclusive to have to the collection. I'll definitely be playing it. Uh, never he sell it. That, he's like, uh, <laughs> and then he's got. I'll I, never sell it. I, <laughs> I, I I looked at it and I was like oh, I don't know it's a little pricey for me and it was pricey it that's was, one thing it was pricey but I it was it's really well made and I was gonna go back today but I just I got so busy in the lack of sleep no I hear you and we played through everything. they played through quite a few levels we I got to they play fought it. one Did of the bosses one? yeah he uh, fought one of the bosses but I played the, uh, it and what was it, it was Sasquatch yeah it was Sasquatch <laughs> Bigfoot yeah Bigfoot, it was Bigfoot. Yeah. you get to fight him um, so yeah that's that's I think everything mm-hmm. we're looking through all this stuff here. Anything Are you all else? done with your stuff as well? Uh, 
That's cool. it, I guess. So. <laughs> that's the wrap up. That's the pick. I mean, I mean, that's everything. not just that's it. Like, it's a crap load yeah. of stuff. So y- you got a ton of Mega Man stuff, stuff yep. that you probably don't see every day. No, nope. Russ got his uh, home brews. Yeah. Stuff yeah, he definitely actually keep needed for his collection that he had on his list. Yeah. yeah. And then you got all the awesome like I got a bunch of show stuff and you bo- did. a lot of uh, exclusives and. Uh, and then that NES game that, I mean, you're going yeah. for a complete set anyways, I'm and that's a, a nice one set. to add, mm-hmm. considering that everything, you know, I'm surprised you still have all your limbs. <laughs> you don't have to leave something behind <laughs> from how expensive everything yeah. is. That's I think my first, or, no, it's my second NES game this year, and we're almost in November. I got totally rad a couple weeks ago, and that, so. So yeah, so um, uh, I mean, um, aside from that, uh, thanks Doc for, let, for having <laughs> us over and letting us stay here. Um... You know, I guess we can sum up a little bit. I know we've done it in another video. Okay, yeah. We did, but yeah. the, uh, but the doc was there. I mean, there, with so, us having three channels and um, stuff. It's just, it was a great experience. And um, oh it yeah, was, it was excellent. Not only just the video game stuff that we were able to grab, but just meeting people and especially you guys since we hadn't really met each other. Yeah. And so now maybe it'll be a lot easier to, to kind of be like, oh yeah, let's go to Portland. Yeah. Which, yeah. Russ is coming 100% next year. I'm not sure yet, so... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I won't miss my flight this year. Jessica, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've been talking and we've been we started our YouTube channel about the same time. We really did. Ago. Yeah, we really did. And Russ might have been a little, a little bit. Longer. I had a channel, but honestly, I didn't know what I was right. doing with yeah. it. Yeah. So I would upload a video every like seven months or something. It was random. more like your custom like car, yeah, like, painted. And then and I kind of started watching other people's videos, and I was like, no, maybe I'll do this more often. Yeah. So somehow. You know, I came across this George's channel. So we've just been growing together kind of. Yeah, awesome. and we, I think we've Remember been we in a... fit, hit 100 about the same time. Yeah, woo! There were some times where I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this YouTube thing. And whatever. <laughs> it definitely kept me on track. And we got to do a few collaboration videos that kind of helped. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Christmas And then video and... trades, kind of open trades, oh, just like sending some... packages back and forth. Yeah, and so absolutely. That kind of helps build the relationship. Yeah. It's so... great having you guys. You can come out anytime. Thanks. Oh, awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah. We're actually about to hit some food truck carts here in Portland, so we're super excited about that. Yep. So yeah, anyways. Um, <laughs> hope you enjoyed watching. the video and yeah. uh, watching the pickups, and definitely come out next year. Uh, dates haven't been released, but aim for about third weekend in October, and this year was the largest That's expo. what they said. They yeah. had the most attendance. So we picked a good year to come. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I don't know um, if anybody is going to be watching this, but um, thanks to Chuck and Rick. Those are the two that I met yeah. for sure in person. If, if by chance you do happen to watch this, you know, because I know they yeah. watch your Portland. I, I'm pretty sure they watch your, your videos. Yeah, they, they like, I, I did a, a good job, they said, <laughs> on my Portland video. Yeah, so if you so. do by happen chance to come across this thanks for having us and and uh for letting us in even though Absolutely. he's really crazy and i have to watch him the whole time you know what i'm saying <laughs> they got media passes I, I i greased the wheels and uh yeah made it happen hey yeah. we definitely took a lot of media um i'll have to update the video in the future and leave future links uh down below if you're watching this a little bit later on but we're gonna have full portland retro gaming expo videos that'll probably be you know a good half hour 45 minutes yeah. of all the stuff that we're doing um, there's so much footage, it's probably going to take me a good couple weeks to go through it. Yeah, for sure. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. Take two of these and come see him in the morning. <laughs> Later, guys. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>